A few months ago, I decided to make the first video of each month about the latest news in the field of longevity science. But this time, I decided to make the news video about RadFest, which was last month. So stay tuned for a review of the highlights of RadFest. RadFest, which is a festival for the revolution against aging and death, happened last month and ran from October 2nd to October 4th. It was organized by the Coalition for Radical Life Extension, which is an outgrowth of People Unlimited of Scottsdale, Arizona. And this year, it was a virtual event, like almost everything else. Over the course of three days, it had presentations by many of the luminaries in the longevity movement. People like Dr. Aubrey de Grey, Dr. Greg Fahey, Dave Asprey, George Hamilton, Liz Parrish, Bill Falloon, Dr. Sandra Kaufman, James Stroll and Bernadine, Dr. Bill Andrews, and Dr. Natasha Vitamore. With over 45 presenters and almost 20 hours of content on the main stage alone, RadFest was just too big to take a look at every presentation. So this is just the highlights of just the things that were of interest to me or that I thought were memorable. Friday, October 2nd, was day one. And as you might expect, some of the first few presentations were about COVID-19 and immunity, something that's on everyone's mind. Dave Asprey, the biohacker and founder of Bulletproof Coffee and Bulletproof Diet, came on and talked about things that everyone can do right now to boost our immune system. Things like ozone therapy, taking andrographis, stefania root, vitamin C, zinc, quercetin, and undergoing ketosis. Then Dr. Greg Fahey came on and he talked about a new trim study that he's doing. Now this one is going to be more inclusive and I believe that it's going to be taking place for a longer period of time. He gave a link to the submit an application to join the study. I applied and if you want to apply, I've included a link in the description. Then they had a panel on sexual function as we age and that panel included Dave Asprey again and he talked about therapies like red light therapy, shockwave therapy and lasers and microdoses of electricity. Then Dr. Amy Killen talked about a four-pronged approach to sexual longevity. This approach mines the mind, supports the structures, boosts blood flow, and optimizes hormones. Next, Dr. Thierry Hertog wrapped things up with a discussion of how to boost hormones like thyroid, oxytocin, melanocyte stimulating hormone, the sex hormones, DHEA, and human growth hormone. Finally, David Schmidt of LifeWave closed out the day with a talk about a patch that his company produces called X39. Now, as I understand it, this patch is a form of phototherapy. The patch is actually a light that's activated by body heat, and it turns up the stem cell activity by elevating a peptide. It improves wound healing, alleviates pain, improves the skin, helps you sleep better, and maintains a healthy inflammatory response. On day two, Bill Falloon of the Life Extension Foundation came on and talked about some of the latest research in longevity, and he covered too many exciting studies to go into here, but I put a link in the description that'll take you to the slides for his PowerPoint presentation. You should definitely take a look at that. Then they had an interview with Chip Walter, who's written a book called Immortality Inc., and that's about the investments of the Silicon Valley in the longevity movement. Dr. Joe Cleaver gave a presentation on senolytics and talked about peptides and telomerase. Then Raymond Palmer gave a talk about, uh, about engineering metabolic pathways and described a potential drug that could induce your body to respond as though were responding to a strenuous workout, taking a pill instead of working out and getting the same result. Now, I have to admit, I am a little skeptical about that. Then Dr. Sandra Kaufman interviewed George Hamilton and they talked about his own personal longevity regime. Dr. Kaufman is the author of The Kaufman Protocol, and apparently George came to her for a personalized program. Now, although I didn't really learn anything new about longevity from George and Sandra, he told some really interesting stories. After that, they had a panel on pet longevity. This included doctors Kat Cotter, Bill Andrews, and Oscar Guadarrama. Now, this was pretty interesting, and they had a similar panel at last year's RadFest. They talked about strategies to extend your pet's lifespan as well as your own. Now, one of the things that I found interesting was that while it can take a long time to determine if anything is working on yourself because of the long human lifespan, you can tell pretty quickly 
if any of the strategies that you try are working on your pets. After each day, they'd have a happy hour where they'd take a few participants and allow them to join in on a Zoom call that everyone could watch. Now, they had about 1,800 people attending RadFest, but only about a dozen people got to participate in the Zoom call. So I felt pretty fortunate that I was chosen to be one of them. Sunday was the last day, and it started off with a presentation by Dr. Natasha Vitamore. She talked about how time is the ultimate biomarker and about the conundrum between the desire to speed time up so that we all arrive at a point where enough discoveries have been made to defeat and reverse the effects of aging and slowing time down so that we don't age as fast. And she presented the concept of a longevity portfolio. The idea is how you invest your time and effort and it's the opposite of an investment portfolio. You invest conservatively when you're young and have lots of time and you invest aggressively when you're old and time is running out. Then James Stroll and Bernadine came on and talked about the whole longevity movement and about People Unlimited, which is the organization behind RadFest. It's located in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's a great bunch of people. Now, I went to Scottsdale last year just before the pandemic struck and hung out with them for a long weekend. I had a great time and I would have been back if not for COVID-19. Rudy Hoffman gave a talk and he's an insurance agent who provides policies that allow people to set up a cryonics exit strategy in case they move on before science can deliver them from the ravages of aging. Then Liz Parrish from BioViva gave a presentation about what her company is doing. BioViva is involved in gene therapy and Liz is known as patient zero in the longevity community because of her willingness to try those therapies out on herself. BioViva is working with four molecules telomerase to lengthen telomeres, folostatin to increase muscle mass, clotho to improve brain function, and PGC1-alpha to boost mitochondrial function. BioViva also offers their own test to measure biological age called Timekeeper Methylation Test. They also offer a program that can keep all of your test results, both theirs and tests that you get elsewhere, in a single information vault that can track your data anonymously to aid in longevity research. RadFest wrapped up with a presentation from Dr. Aubrey de Grey, and his talks are always a treat. He talked about the future outlook on research and investments in longevity, and whether or not there was a silver lining for longevity research in the COVID pandemic, and he seems to feel there is. He also talked briefly about something that I've been interested in for a long time, which is the Foresight Institute. It was created by the founder of nanotechnology, Eric Drexler, and his partner, Chris Peterson. It's got a new president named Allison Dutman, and she's apparently revitalized foresight. And she's particularly interested in longevity and aging. So it'll be interesting to watch and see what comes of that. Aubrey concluded his presentation by talking about the X Prize. Now, as you may know, the X Prize was created by Peter Diamandis and was instrumental in getting the private sector to become involved in space exploration. They've created other X Prizes and Aubrey's been working for years with Peter to get an X Prize for aging and rejuvenation established. And he announced that that appears to be on the horizon, finally. Now, I subscribe to Peter's newsletter and recently it's been focusing on that very topic. So I'm hopeful that we'll see that come to fruition in the not too distant future. Now, in addition to the main stage presentations, another aspect of RadFest has always been Rad City, which is where players in the longevity space have an opportunity to hawk their wares. And Rad City also has its own stage where these vendors can give presentations about their company and products. Now, this has always been as interesting as the main stage, and this year was no different. In addition to the main stage presentation, there are an additional 19 presentations from the Rad City stage. Now, I haven't really had time to comb through all of these presentations, but a lot of them look really interesting, with titles like Therapeutic Angiogenesis for Disease Re Reversal, Bioregenerative Therapies for Neurodegenerative Diseases, Activating Key Longevity Pathways with Nutrition, Full Spectrum Infrared Light, and Full Body Stem Cell Makeover, to name but a few. If you missed RadFest, but you're interested in watching it or any of the presentations, you can purchase a rental contract from Vimeo. It costs $197 and it lasts for a year. And the link to the RadFest content is in the description. Okay, 
That's it for me. If you're interested in learning more about RadFest, you might want to watch these videos that I made after attending last year's RadFest. Catch you next week. I'm out of here.